Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is a form of diabetes insipidus primarily due to pathology of the kidney. This is in contrast to central neurogenic diabetes insipidus, which is caused by insufficient levels of antidiuretic hormone arginine vasopressin. Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is caused by an improper response of the kidney to ADH, leading to a decrease in the ability of the kidney to concentrate the urine by removing free water. Etymology, the name of the disease comes from, diabetes, from L diabetes, from GK. Diabetes excessive discharge of urine, lit to pass through, siphon, from diabinine to pass through, from dia through plus banine to go, insipidus without taste or perceptible flavor, from FR. Insipide, from LL insipidus tasteless, from L in not plus sapidus tasty, from sapa have a taste. This is because patients experience polyuria, and that the urine content does not have an elevated glucose concentration, as opposed to diabetes mellitus. Although they shared a name, diabetes mellitus and diabetes insipidus are two separate conditions. Both cause excessive urination but whereas diabetes insipidus is a problem with the production of antidiuretic hormone or the kidney's response to antidiuretic hormone. Diabetes mellitus causes polyuria via osmotic diuresis, due to the high blood sugar leaking into the urine, taking excess water along with it. Signs and symptoms The clinical manifestation is similar to neurogenic diabetes insipidus, presenting with excessive thirst and excretion of a large amount of dilute urine. Dehydration is common, and incontinence can occur secondary to chronic bladder distension. On investigation, there will be an increased plasma osmolarity and decreased urine osmolarity. As pituitary function is normal, ADH levels are likely to be a normal or raised. Polyuria will continue as long as the patient is able to drink. If the patient is unable to drink and is still unable to concentrate the urine, then hypernatremia will ensue with its neurologic symptoms. Causes equals Acquired equals Nephrogenic DI is most common in its acquired forms, meaning that the defect was not present at birth. These acquired forms have numerous potential causes. The most obvious cause is a kidney or systemic disorder, including amyloidosis, polycystic kidney disease, electrolyte imbalance, or some other kidney defect. The major causes of acquired NDI that produce clinical symptoms in the adult are lithium toxicity and high blood calcium. Chronic lithium ingestion appears to affect the tubules by entering the collecting tubule cells through sodium channels, accumulating and interfering with the normal response to ADH in a mechanism that is not yet fully understood. High blood calcium causes natarhesis and water diuresis, in part by its effect through the calcium sensing receptor. Osmotic, other causes of acquired NDI include low blood potassium, post obstructive polyuria sickle cell disease trait, amyloidosis, Stjogren syndrome, renal cystic disease, Barter syndrome, and various medications. In addition to kidney and systemic disorders, nephrogenic DI can present itself as a side effect to some medications. The most common and well-known of these medications is lithium, although there are many other medications that cause this effect with lesser frequency. Equals hereditary equals this form of DI can also be hereditary. Diagnosis Differential diagnosis includes nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, neurogenic central diabetes insipidus and cytogenic polydipsia. They may be differentiated by using the water deprivation test. Recently, lab assays for ADH are available and can aid in diagnosis. If able to rehydrate properly, Sodium concentration should be nearer to the maximum of the normal range. This, however, is not a diagnostic finding, as it depends on patient hydration. DDAVP can also be used. If the patient is able to concentrate urine following administration of DDAVP, then the cause of the diabetes insipidus is neurogenic. If no response occurs to DDAVP administration, then the cause is likely to be nephrogenic. Treatment. Persons with nephrogenic diabetes insipidus will need to consume enough fluids to equal the amount of urine produced. Any underlying cause such as high blood calcium must be corrected to treat NDI. 
the first line of treatment is hydrochloroatazide and amyloride. Consider a low salt and low protein diet. Thiazide is used in treatment because diabetes insipidus causes the excretion of more water than sodium. This condition results in a net concentrating effect on the serum. This high serum osmolarity stimulates excessive thirst in an attempt to dilute the serum back to normal and provide free water for excreting the excess serum solutes. However, since the patient is unable to concentrate urine to excrete the excess solutes, the resulting urine fails to decrease serum osmolarity and the cycle repeats itself, hence excessive urination. Thiazide diuretics allow increased excretion of Na plus and water, thereby reducing the serum osmolarity and eliminating volume excess. Basically, thiazides allow increased solute excretion in the urine, breaking the polydipsia polyuria cycle. References